Hey everyone, welcome back to Alex Mustang Garage. Uh, today we're going to be doing some brake shoe replacement on drum brakes on the front of a 66 uh, Ford Mustang. Real quick before we dive into this, um, we kind of want to hear from you guys what kind of Mustangs you're working on, what kind of brake shoes you like the best, any tips or tricks or anything like that. Don't be afraid to leave a comment below. And, uh, and if you're enjoying you know, the content that you're seeing from me, um, let's go ahead and hit that subscribe button and then click on the notification bell. So anyways, with that out of the way, let's jump right in on how to remove our brake shoes. Okay, uh, first things first, um, we already have our drums off, obviously. Um, we need to take off our springs. We have our uh, drum brake shoe removal tool. Um, this is the, the end that we're gonna use for taking off the springs. Um, and essentially you're going to get like underneath the spring and you're going to twist and it's just going to easily kind of pop those right off. Um, and before I kind of jump right into it, if you're not familiar with drum shoes and all the arrangements of all the springs, um, it's always good to keep one side together so that way you have a reference to go back to if you kind of forget where everything goes. So uh, with that being said, we will just kind of put this on here and you can twist that spring right off. If you're reusing springs, it's good to kind of stay organized. And so I'll just kind of like orient them on the, on the ground as far as what side they're from and where they go. But then you're gonna come over here and get the lip of this tool up underneath that spring and twist. just like that. I hope I did that slow enough so you can see it, but um, that pops off. This little retainer which holds that cable, for your automatic adjuster, is also kind of held in with the spring. Pull the cable off and away we go. Okay, so now you're just kind of left with this automatic adjuster and the spring. This one usually is not very tight. You can actually just kind of slide this down and I can always usually pull it off just by hand like that and then I'll pull that one off. And then that little device pulls right off. That's for your automatic adjuster, which is right here. And that, you can kind of thread in and you can pull that out. So now with the springs all out of the way, the only thing left are just your shoes, which are being held in with this. So that's where this tool comes into play. So we're going to use this. Sometimes I get my hand on the back side to kind of hold that pin in. You're going to push and twist to get that slot to line up like that. That comes out and now your shoe comes off. Pull your pin out. Sometimes they're just a little stubborn. You can do the same trick with some needle nose pliers. Okay, so that's all off. And that is how you take your shoes off. So from here, I like to clean everything. Everything, everything needs to be cleaned of all this dust. Wear a mask if you're gonna be blowing this stuff in the air because sometimes if they're old, old, old shoes, they can have the asbestos in there. So do be aware of that and we'll get this cleaned up and then we'll put our shoes back together. Okay, so now that we've got everything cleaned, um, we're gonna be ready for reassemble. So before I do that, um, these are your contact pads for your shoe. I always put um, some good lubricant on that. Um, I like to use the Permatex uh, brake parts lubrication. I use this on any kind of, whether I'm doing disc brakes or drum brakes or whatever, this is really, really good stuff here. So yeah, you can actually get this stuff from Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description below. So, okay. so the next thing is getting your shoes on. So um, you want to like make sure you get these oriented correctly. So you have a primary shoe and a secondary shoe. If you can see, one will have longer uh, pad material than the other. Your primary shoe goes in front. It is the smaller 
brake lining. It has less brake lining material. Your secondary goes in behind. Towards the rear of the vehicle, it has the most brake lining. So make sure you get those oriented correctly. Okay, so as far as um, you want to make sure this end is going up here like this, obviously it can only go on you know, one way, but that's how it goes. We're going to get our pins through with our spring. You can get new springs, new hardware kit. You can get these at your local parts stores. We decided, we decided that ours were in pretty good shape. So we just cleaned them and reused them. So it's not going to be like perfectly aligned when you first get it on, but the point is it's not going to, it's not going to fall off. Just to kind of give you a, a good visual on what you're actually trying to achieve, this pin goes through, the spring goes on like that, and then your little retainer is going to go on and then twist. That way it can't come out, and then the spring Just kind of holds the shoe on like that, so that way you can get a good visual. So. I'm gonna get it like close enough. Okay, so now we got our shoes on. So now we're ready to start building up. Um, I usually build from the bottom. So this is our adjuster assembly. If you reuse these, um, make sure they're cleaned up really, really well. And I also will put some anti-seize on the threads here, as well as the cap, um, which would go there and here. So um, I see a lot of cars where these are just like completely seized up. You can get replacements just at your local auto parts store. Um, but if you can reuse them, make sure they're good and clean and uh, get some anti seize in there. Okay, so now you can get this thing all together. Should be turning nice and smooth. So if you're ever confused about how this goes, if it goes this way or it goes this way, you always need to look at where your little window is here on the backing plate because that's where you would insert your adjusting tool in order to turn this wheel if you needed to manually adjust these brakes with your wheel and drum all connected. So make sure that's oriented correctly like so. Okay, so now the adjuster is in, we're gonna put our little adjuster bracket on. And that is the self-adjuster that's supposed to adjust and tighten um, your adjusting screw down there. So that goes here. The spring goes on this shoe. And comes across and hooks into this. So usually I can do that by hand. It's usually not that tight of a spring. And yes, your shoes are going to kind of move around a little bit on you, but that will set up your adjuster assembly with the spring there. So next thing is just that little retainer for your cable. Cable goes on like that, goes around here, and we can connect it to that lever later. But now we need to get our two springs up here. Okay, so now we're gonna get our springs here. So this spring is gonna also hold that little, oop, and this is where it gets kinda of hard. It's gonna hold this cable in 
like so. And now you gotta stretch that spring all the way up here. So that's where we get this tool back. So we are using this tool again, but instead of using this to remove, we're gonna use this end to install. So it's kind of got this little indent here to kind of help guide you. You put the spring on and you hook that end like so. And just kind of let it slide off your tool and onto its position. Whoop. Hit the camera. Just like that piece of cake. <laughs> <laughs> I okay. if you were gonna eat piece that. of cake. Okay. It wasn't a piece of cake. <laughs> All right. So this is like really. So I apologize, it's kind of difficult to like work around the camera and the lighting and everything just so you guys have a really good view. Um, but anyways, there's your, there's your spring. Yeah, so like to attach this cable, you can actually just kind of manually move that up. And then you can just attach it. Oops, let's do that again. It just came off our guide there. Okay, again. Okay, so yeah, the cable just kind of goes around there and hooks into your adjuster bracket. So, okay, now for our primary spring here, you can go down here in this hole and hook up to here. Get our tool into place. This just kind of hooks on like that. And you can just slide them on the place. And it really is just a piece of cake like that. Okay, so that is your shoe replacement. Um, just make sure all your springs are good. You can you can get new springs. You can get new hardware. All this stuff you can get it. O'Reilly. You can get it at AutoZone. You can get it at Napa. All those guys. And from here, you would just. You know, kind of loosen these. As, as you tighten that adjuster, your shoes are going to spread out and kind of create more of a preload on your drum. And that's where you want to, like, get your adjustment set, get your drum on there, and you can kind of adjust it with the drum on from the backing plate here. And then you get to the where there's just a slight amount of drag, and you should be good, and you can kind of play around with it to however it feels best for you. Um, you also got to make sure it's kind of the same on the other side. So that way you're not pulling to the right or pulling to the left when you're braking because um, that's a problem. Um, getting these adjusted right is, is super key. So we would love to hear from you guys if you have any questions or comments or tips or tricks that you did not see in this video. Uh, please don't be afraid to make those comments down below. Anyways, I hope that gives you a really good look at what's going on here and how all this goes back together. But uh, I'll just kind of scroll over it one more time for you so you can kind of see everything. Um, I know a lot of people are like not great with drum brakes because it's just kind of a thing of the past and we're so used to our disc brake systems now that um, you know we kind of forget how to do drum brakes. So but anyways, um, once you do a few, they're not too bad. Um, and so, anyways, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Um, if you haven't had a chance to, please support the channel by subscribing, liking the video. And um, we'll catch you next time.